All right, welcome back to Art for Operation Underground Railroad. This project um, kind of changed shapes a number of times. My design kept changing on me, but um, it was kind of a fun one to discover what it ended up being in the end. Um, for this for first bit, uh, this resin was... Uh, I don't know, not the resin, but the coloring was donated by Jay Diction. They also sent a little bit of resin over. Um, it's good stuff. Seemed to be a good pigment pigment for resin. Um, these smaller resin bits, uh, I used the Illumilite resin, which was fine. I wasn't looking for anything special there, um, since it was going to be colored and uh, just small pieces. I learned a lesson with resin <laughs> one of many that if you put them in uh, paper bowls it's going to stick to your paper these are those waxed paper bowls and i thought it would pop out easy but uh nope but in the end um it actually turned out to be useful so i was going for a shattered explosion type of look and as i was breaking it apart um i realized that i wanted to keep it in the same pattern so it looked like it all went together and because there was a little paper on the back I could draw a design and put it back together without too much uh, hardship because sometimes it's hard to figure out how they went together you'll see in the end that it didn't really matter anyway but the idea was interesting I'll have to visit this one again I was, at first I was going for a kind of a shattered plate look slash stained glass look and in the end I went for more of an explosion look and um, anyway it's one thing I enjoy about this type of art is you can just kind of let it happen and change your mind halfway through no big deal you can kind of modify things a little bit so the wood portion is a peach of uh, I'm sorry a piece of birch wood um, I had a huge birch tree die in my backyard when we built our home I think the construction process killed it it wasn't doing very well and I've noticed around the neighborhood there's a lot of trees about that same age same type dying so there must be some disease going around or they only live so long but it's a lovely lovely wood it's got some great grain in it it has a ton of cracks in it which I actually don't mind it's um, adds some interest to it and um, some of my projects I've saved the bark which is really cool but in this case I just wanted a nice round piece of wood to work with I had this lathe by Laguna it's the 1836 Revo um I had it now for about a year just over a year and I love this thing it's a workhorse the um provides enough power that even if with my resin soaked heavy pieces it's rare that I stop the thing um yeah really like that thing they have donated two lights to the project that attached to the lathe which have made my filming a whole lot easier and safer able to see better we are about to crack the 15,000 subscribers, which for me is unbelievable. I remember when I couldn't crack a 1,000 to save my life. And um, because of your guys' awesome support, we're raising somewhere between 1000 and $2,000 a month just from the YouTube, pro YouTube viewing. So thank you for your support. It's awesome. It all goes to Operation Underground Railroad, uh, where we're fighting child trafficking around the world. Uh, this last year, we donated close to what was it, like thirty six, thirty seven thousand dollars, and hope to double it this year. So, thanks for sharing and watching and subscribing. That makes all the difference in the world. This piece, as all my pieces are, is available at artforour.org. I donate all my profit to Operation Underground Railroad. There's about eighty different artists who have also donated a ton of awesome work. So go buy stuff, everything from a knitted hat to high-end pieces of art.
you name it, we've we've got lots of great uh, donations. So I get these ideas. I don't know where they come from, but if you ever seen your doctor and he seems to space off for a minute and uh, get some bright light in his idea in his head, it's because some idea just hit him and he's a midnight closet lathe worker. <laughs> he's sometimes sometimes ideas hit me at the strangest times, middle of surgery or something. But um, this, I was just messing around with this idea. I wasn't even sure where I was going to end up with it. I this one has inspired me for the future to do more of a stained glass look. I've always been intrigued by stained glass. So, um, yeah, we're going to explore this one a lot in the future. We'll have to see what uh, what comes of it. I tried a few different options for uh, carving out the niches. Uh, my best success seems to be the file, the nail file, that skinny little filer which is fantastic and the uh, angle grinder with a carving disc on it they're just the most efficient for this kind of work i get a lot less chipping out a lot less tearing out with these tools as opposed to routers and that which are pretty violent um my roto zip sometimes it just climbs the wood and tears a hole where you don't want it to be where as long as all you need is a straight shot, the angle grinder is um, really uh, controllable, I think is what I'm trying to say. I know my pieces for the purest woodworker, probably heresy, <laughs> ruining these lovely bits of wood. I, I have got a wood pile that's probably 30 yards long and three three piles deep i have so much wood i can't store it appropriately or treat it um so it's kind of become a salvage thing my projects i like to use the gnarliest rot most rotten pieces of wood since i'm usually dunking them in resin it um, stabilizes them so they're safe and i i like the look of the older aged wood for this kind of stuff and since I'm going to carve it to death, I don't mind too much that it's not a, a real elegant piece of wood that's being destroyed, but it's kind of a funny thing. You'll notice on one of these um, one of these windows, I dumped the plate on accident. So you'll see me flip the pieces over in exasperation, and I actually did use that design I drew on them back to put it back together because I could not figure out where they went. <laughs> so, in the end, it was a good idea. Now you'll notice you can see all the pieces how they fit together. Um, kind of an explosion, cracked look. Uh, you'll notice a lot of that disappears, and I'll explain why when I'm turning. All right, so meet my 15-gallon vacuum chamber. This is a beast. I could climb inside this thing. I don't think I'm the first one to come up with this process, but here's what I've got so far. I don't want to spend an extra step. Um, oh, again, thank you for to Laguna for these awesome lights they've donated. They've been an absolute lifesaver. And I love the lathe, so go Laguna. Anyway, the process here is, is the following. So you put the wood project, regardless of what it is, in your vacuum chamber. Try to keep the resin as, as in, uh, you try to keep the piece of wood underneath the resin as much as possible. It doesn't have to be perfect, but as, as closely dunked in it as you can. I run it through 
as many cycles as it takes for the bubbles to stop rising. Um, usually takes half an hour to an hour to do that. Um, and again, it doesn't matter that the, the resin's like perfectly around the, the wood. All we're trying to do is get the wood to be at the bottom of the resin chamber. The resin's gonna bubble. And every time that you drop the pressure in the chamber to help the bubbles dissipate. I, I like to do that. I think you could just let it rise and just leave it there, but I'm mm. always sitting there babysitting it. Uh, I always use the Thick Set Fathom Resin by Total Boat. These guys are an amazing sponsor of this channel. They've increased our profitability by a ton. This resin's not, resin in general is not cheap, and they have donated thousands of dollars worth of resin uh, to the cause and so and, and I think it's one of the better ones I can get in the USA I can do three inch deep pours no problem um, turns great on the lathe big fan of this stuff I, I can't I was very excited when they came out with this this, this year because it's uh, something they were lacking in their uh, repertoire of resins so loved it I'll, I'll keep using it forever it's good stuff so I'm just Kind of, I've got the thing, the piece three fourths of the way submerged in the resin, taped off the edges so I don't have to make a mess, and then, and then I let it run. I sat here and ate my dinner, uh, had some cold pizza in the garage. No shame there. Um, you just, you'll just see the bubbles rise, and I cut the, the vacuum, and, and so it doesn't get up into the lid and make a mess. If you do let it get too high, it'll suck into the the vacuum pump and down your line, you'll be, you could ruin your pump. Now I made a big mistake and I don't think you even see me do it there, but I turned off my vacuum without releasing the vacuum chamber. And unfortunately what happens is the vacuum sucks air through the pump, which brings a lot of it, the oil from the pump. Here's a little quick preview of my next project. Stay tuned for that one. Anyway, it sucked the oil down the line into my chamber, and so I had oil in my resin, and the resin is still quite thin and, and liquidy, so I didn't know how to separate it. So I just plowed forward, hoping that the resin would rise to the, to the top. You'll notice something else happened. I packed... I used this thick... Um, plastic sheeting it's used for underlayment under floors to, to mute sound under hardwood floors and so I use that around the windows to kind of shield it and then I put that in a bag and then I put pack sand around it and the idea is that that sheeting is supposed to keep the sand from from pushing um, the plastic bag into my windows a problem I've had in the past and I vastly underestimated the weight of the sand and it still pushed that thick that thick orange foam into the windows and you'll see that's what's left as I'm turning here so to excavate that I either had to hand cut it out and polish little flat pieces or sacrifice a part of the the center of the the windows I went for the latter mainly because I was just tired and feeling lazy but in hindsight I kind of wished I just worked it and had little flat places on the outside of the the vase but Oh, well, you live and you learn. So, so the lessons learned, uh, drop the, turn the valve in the vacuum chamber, let the air come in through the valves, not through your pump or it'll suck in oil, um, which in the end gave a little bit of a cloudy look to the center of the, the windows, which because I had to carve it out because my pieces or the supporting pieces collapsed in there a little bit, actually made it look like a little bit of smoke after a, an explosion. So Lost one, 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 I suppose. Um, next time around, I'm going to use um, some cheap cutting boards from dollar, a dollar store. Somebody suggested that a long time ago. I'll probably use that for my wall to shield off my window so nothing collapses in there. It's a tricky thing. I, I see a lot of people doing tables and flat scenarios, or they're doing just a small little dam around their, their cracks in their bowl, or they just dunk the whole thing in in a big uh, big bucket but I'm rarely making things that are the shape I need so the 
I would waste a ton of resin if I just put it in a bucket, you know? So if you're wondering why I do try to come up with this molding process, that's why I was trying to save resin. And boy, did I fail on the bottom of this thing. You'll notice there was a huge wad of resin at the bottom. I did not pack the sand around there well enough. I thought I did, but I didn't. It's usually not a problem, but uh, so three, three lessons I learned on this project. If you've ever watched any of my other projects, you'll notice um, how well lit things are this time. <laughs> I'm in my garage and I've got some lots of lights, but man, it's it's hard to light this up well enough in the right place, in the right way. And the Laguna lay, lathe lights that mount to their lathe um, are a godsend. They, they're great. So I really enjoy them. So big thank you to Laguna once again. So, back to the uh, resin process. So, round one, you stick it in the vacuum chamber, run a number of, of cycles until the bubbles stop coming up. And what's happening is every time you drop it, well, when you, when you increase the vacuum or, or drop the pressure in there, you're sucking air, you're forcing air out of the resin and the wood. And when you drop, when you release the vacuum and the pressure rises, um, the vac the um, the resin is sucked into the wood where the air used to be, and so you're infusing the wood with resin, which I think will preserve it for forever. I mean, it's kind of an unusual thing. Not only that, but it gets into every tiny crack much better than if you're just soaking it in resin. 10 times better. Um, so that's an unusual benefit. If you look at the yarn bowl project I did for my wife, it, it's almost like it stains the wood, brings out some nice, lovely, deep colors. Um, because of the oil issue I had on this one, the mistake I made, um, there's some weird things in the wood. So I wouldn't use this as a great example of what it turns out to be, but that yarn bowl looked, I thought, the wood part looked amazing. So so that's one benefit. It, it works its way into the the cracks and the, and the creases better. The other benefit of the vacuum chamber is you get rid of the micro bubbles um, that are in, re that's in resin naturally when you, when you uh, uh, mix it. And then the, one of the greatest benefits of the vacuum chamber is that it gets rid of hidden pockets of air that always manage to release and create streaming trails of bubbles into the resin that's visible. Now it's not a big deal if you're using thick color in your resin, but if you're doing clear like I like to do, you want that thing glassy clear. And you know, I have so many projects where I've been disappointed where there's been streams of bubbles. Even though this this fathom resin by Total Boat takes a long time to set up which sometimes is enough time to let it soak into the resin or the wood and keep it from, from bubbling, um, it's still not enough time. And so the, the vacuum chamber has absolutely solved that problem. There isn't a single bubble in this whole project, which I was ecstatic about. Then when you turn around and put it in the, the vacuum or the um, pressure pot, which I've got there, which is a five gallon pressure pot, um, it compresses it so any subsequent bubbles that came showed up get compressed and you know just kind of cleans it up for you and it's crystal clear it's fantastic uh, if you're going for a clear resin look i don't think you can beat that process it's it's phenomenal for what i've got to work with for who my sponsors are i i am really happy with what we've got i've solved all all the problems of bubbles in my in my resin so Thank you for joining. Um, always, everything we do is to support Operation Underground, Ra Underground Railroad, fighting child traffic around the world. So we'll see you on the next project.